Hey, in today's video, I'm going to talk about an intro to bookkeeping for attorneys. So I'm going to talk about trust accounts and client advances, as well as commissions for attorney salaries. I'm Morgan from finepoints.biz and my goal is to help you get organized. You might know that this month I'm doing a series on different types of clients for bookkeepers. So I had an overarching video of the 30 best clients that you can have starting out as a bookkeeper. The thumbnail looks like this. And then I'm also talking about different niches that you could do that are qu quite a bit more specialized and you can charge a higher rate for those if you know those really well and you just get really into that industry. So I did one on nonprofits and then let me know in the comments if there's any other subjects or specialties that you would like to see as a bookkeeper. All right, so for lawyers, the biggest thing that bookkeepers will think of with lawyers is trust accounts. And what this is, is it's like a retainer that a lawyer will require money upfront from a client before they do the work. So maybe you, you have hired an attorney and it's gonna cost $5,000. So they will want $3,000 before they start working. And that's just kind of like an insurance to the lawyer so that they are not doing all this work without getting paid. So that's pretty standard in um, this industry as well as a couple other industries. So from a bookkeeping perspective, this becomes kind of interesting because, so from an income standpoint, it looks like that $3,000 is in the trust account, is in the bank accounts for the attorneys but that attorney has not actually earned that money yet. So it doesn't belong to the business. It doesn't belong to the law firm until the lawyer actually does the work that, you know, correlates with that money. The money still belongs to the client. So the system that is devised is that there is like a holding account called a trust account. And there are specific rules um, from the IRS about how, what, like what you can do with a trust account and the records you have to keep. You can't just have a lawyer that willy nilly like mixes money with their regular money or anything. It has to ver be very specialized and very separate. So I could spend days going into the details of this, but this is kind of meant to be an overview. So this is a niche that I personally am working towards becoming really specialized in. Um, right now I'm in a networking group run by Linda Artisani. I'll leave the information for that group down below if you are interested in that. Let her know that I sent you. But basically for trust accounts, the way that I'm learning it is um, from Linda Artisani is that you should put your trust account as a liability account in your client's QuickBooks file. So it's a separate like bank account, but it is within the same QuickBooks file as the rest of their transactions, the rest of their income and all their money. And then she teaches that you go into the chart of accounts and you make a, a new account for each client and then each matter, which is like the case, like the law case that they would be earning money for. So you'll find in bookkeeping, there are often different schools of thought, you know, across bookkeeping circles. Some people want to do it one way. Some people want to do it another way. So another school of thought would be to keep a totally separate QuickBooks file for the trust account. And then some people I think use um, customers for the, you know, each client and the matter versus using accounts. So again, this is just an overview. So make sure if you want to specialize in this, you do some research and just so you're aware that there are different schools of thought for how to manage trust accounts. And with both of those versions, the attorneys do have to be very regulated and careful with how they deal with their money. And then at the appropriate times, they need to transfer money into their income account once they earn that money. And then they need to make sure they have the correct documentation and that all the accounts will reconcile at the end of the month. So this is something that lawyers can get in trouble for if they don't manage these funds correctly. Um, there's usually a bar association, like a state bar, that can audit that and monitor it um, because they just want to make sure that it's very clear who owns that money. Is it the lawyer's client who's hiring them or has the lawyer earned that money already? All right, and the second thing you'll deal with with law firms is client advances. And we call these in the firm that I work for client cost advance. So I might use those terms interchangeably, but basically this kind of is along the similar idea of the trust account, but it's kind of like almost the opposite. It's like you're giving your client a very short loan to pay for something. So say the lawyer is working on a case and there comes up a couple expenses. So maybe they need to do a filing fee to file something and in the court, maybe they need, need to do a records request to pull some medical records or pull some like footage from something, or maybe they need to hire a private investigator. So these are all costs that might come up as an attorney is working on the case. But instead of going to your client right then and being like, okay, okay, I need 50 bucks for this. Okay, I need a hundred dollars for this. 
the law firm just pays for those expenses and then they bill the client later. And again, it's a little tricky, but from the IRS perspective, this isn't actually an expense incurred by the attorney's business. It's an expense that the, the attorney's client should have to pay. So it's like you're giving them a little loan, a little IOU that they are going to pay back later. So as a bookkeeper, you might imagine this is going to be a lot to track. So you are going to need to partner with your law firm, your client, and um, figure out how they track these expenses. So you need to figure out, you know, what is being spent and then how the client is paying that back. So as a bookkeeper, you might be the one actually sending out invoices to the client and there may be a tracking system. It might be tracked in the attorney's um, like case management system. There's a lot of different case management systems that attorneys might use. The biggest one that I know of is Clio, is called Clio. Um, there's also like Practice Panther and Time Matters and a few others. That is the system that the attorney is using to keep track of all their cases and how much money everyone owes them. This is a slight tangent, but it is most common for attorneys not to do their billing through QuickBooks, I don't think, just because it doesn't have quite the capabilities. So in most of the instances that I have seen, a law firm uses a different client management system. I think that's what you call it, but like Clio. So they're tracking all of their clients and all their data, and maybe they have write-ups for each court case or things like that in a different system other than QuickBooks. And then QuickBooks is used just for their bookkeeping, their accounting to um, track their income and expenses. And then usually those two will link together. So you can feed back and forth between the two systems. So me personally, I've even thought of like micro niching in like a certain software. So like QuickBooks Online and Clio, for example, would be like a very, very specialized, like I'm a bookkeeper, a bookkeeper for attorneys. And then I specialize in these two softwares. And again, that just makes me marketable to a very specific client base and I know those really well, I can speak to them really well, I don't have to learn a new program every time I get a new attorney client. So that's just something to think about as a bookkeeper. All right, so we talked about trust accounts, client advances, and then the other thing that I just wanna to touch on briefly is attorney's commission. So I have, I've kind of gathered that it's pretty common that um, an attorney working for a firm might get like a percentage of the private work they do. And it, of course it depends on the law firm and how they're structured or what kind of law they do. But I just want to touch on this as well because this is something I do currently. So how my attorney client is set up is they, the, all the attorneys in the firm get a base salary and then they get a percentage of any work that they do on top of the base salary. So like they have a base amount of stuff they're supposed to do and then they can get extra. So what I do as a bookkeeper is all of the money comes into my QuickBooks file, it feeds in, and then I categorize it all. I What I tend to do is from the bank feeds, I just put it in one lump area um, that's like income for all. So it's all sitting there waiting for me. Usually there's like maybe 20 transactions per month of those deposits that they make. So a couple per week. And then they have a different tracking system that shows me how much each attorney made. So this deposit was $1,000 and then they can check in their tracking system and be like, okay, this is the attorney's name that made that. And I have separate accounts in the chart of accounts for each attorney's income. And then sometimes they are split because of course you could make a deposit with multiple checks, multiple sources of income. So maybe you wanna bring like three checks to the bank at once. So then you can split those out in QuickBooks, just put them on each line. So I have like Fred in one, George in the next and Sally in the next one. And then you can just put the amounts that each of those people made and then it will total the total deposit. All right, so then in my QuickBooks file, I have these accounts with like the five or 10 attorneys listed and eat how much each one made. And then again, they just get a percentage of that because they work for this overarching law firm. So some of it goes to like, you know, staff expenses or rent or all these things. So say they get like 50%. The fastest way that I have found at this point, let me know if you have a different suggestion in the comments, is I just pull that report from QuickBooks and then I have an Excel spreadsheet that kind of totals up each person's amount and then divides it in half basically. And then sometimes there's a few other like funky things that I have to tweak depending on the person or if there was expenses in the mix. But basically that's kind of the general idea. So then I know, you know, this person, $1,000 at the bank, they earned 500 and then I'm able to add that 
to their commission in Gusto, which is our payroll system. So I'll leave Gusto linked below. I think that I have a code where you can get a discount and I get a discount also if you sign up a certain amount of clients or something. Um, but anyways, Gusto is one of the more, most popular payroll systems, I would say. And then within Gusto, there's just a little, you know, it has their main salary information and then it has a little box that you can just like type in commission and it adds it to it. So it's really easy in that. Program. All right, I feel that was a lot of information in a short time, but let me know in the comments what questions you have and what other in things you're interested in learning about bookkeeping. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.